So my wife wanted me to buy a $1,500 double sink vanity for the upstairs bath, but I thought I could build it myself, so I uh, got this Grizzly Mini Track Saw. I didn't want to invest in a table saw, um, which might have saved me some time, but I was able to do it with the Mini Track Saw, a miter saw, and a trim router. I started with one from Harbor Freight, which turned out to be crap, so I uh, returned it halfway through the project and uh, used my father-in-law's. But this is the bath vanity available on homedepot.com. The reviews said the marble top wasn't that great. <clears throat> and I was a little worried about the quality of the wood. Would it be particle board and such? And, and would it be stapled together? So here's my final product of what I was able to, to make with those tools. Uh, this picture just showing, showing the door fronts. We didn't do the glass like they have. I only spent about 500 bucks um, on all the materials. Whereas the, uh, the other one to buy it plus tax, plus the sinks and faucets would have been about two grand. So saved a lot of money. So I started in a 3D modeling program and uh, modeled up all the pieces, made a drawing from there so I would kind of have a plan and know what to do. And some, uh, some of the things just came down to uh, some simple math and, and mapping it out. Um, so here's a little video of me getting started up with the mini track saw. If you have to make a big cut, um, and if you don't buy the extra track to make a to make a four foot long track or more, um, you end up having to shimmy this thing along and readjust as you go every you know 20 inches. It's a real pain in the butt, um, but it works okay if you have a you know a nice scribe you know line with pencil along. So eventually, I, I made this fixture here, which is a ruler at 90 degrees, um, so I could speed the process along um, in the track would line up with, with the uh, side of the ruler and then I could do repetitive cuts and, and mark out measurements um, so I could, for instance, for the drawers, cut all the, the pieces of the drawers really quickly. So um, this video here is just showing uh, how I'm going through making some of the drawer sides, some pieces that were identical. In the end, a uh, table saw would have been much faster to make these cuts, but the good thing about the track saw is you can lay the piece of wood on the floor on top of a piece of foam and uh, the blade that, that goes through the wood um, just barely goes through, just goes right into the foam. You don't need to handle big pieces of wood on the, on the table saw. And there's really no danger that I could see. There's no way you could get your finger cut off in the, with using this track saw. Um, the blade is uh, fully enclosed and there's no kickback or anything like there would might be on a table saw uh, so overall it worked really well um, I think one negative of this track saw is that you can't just go to Home Depot and buy uh, the blade of your choice I haven't, I haven't seen any uh, blades that are four and a half inch diameter um, so you kind of have the blade set that you can buy on, on Grizzly's website which comes with four different blades um, supposedly for cutting, you know, all different materials from plastics to metal uh, to to wood, which I was uh, only using it for. And the blade seemed to work fine, and the quality of the cuts was uh, fine for the project I was doing. The miter saw really um, <clears throat> took care of all the finished cuts for the uh, trim trim pieces and the, the face frame pieces. So here, oh yeah, I went, forgot one tool that I bought that was invaluable was the Craig uh, pocket hole drilling tool. And you can see these are all pocket holes holding this furniture together, um, piece of furniture that I made. And just glue and then sc screwing these uh, Craig screws in. I used a ton of them, probably uh, 100 to 200 screws in the, in the whole entire project because uh, well, uh, of course you use quite a few with each drawer. Um, if you can imagine, two, at least two at each joint. So this is the, the basic frame. Um, I built it upstairs <laughs> after I cut all the pieces in my garage and kind of put it together out in the hallway and then slid it into the bathroom because it was going to be too big once I got everything together. Um, there's a piece of the face frame, one rectangle of it that I put on the side and I did a little test paint on the side, but that teal was too much. Here's a front face frame that was all put together with Craig uh, pocket screws. I used uh, particle board for the top and used polyurethane to seal it on um, all sides. 
So I chose this um, drop-in sink and <clears throat> faucet from Home Depot. Just got some cheap stuff that can get me by for a few years um, in case I want to change the top or something later. For the top, I uh, chose these vinyl tiles. Um, they're like 87 cents each. Only need 12 of them to cover the whole thing. And then uh, routed them on the sides to, to trim them and put the, the edges on using the same uh, tile material. Came out pretty good. Who knows how long it'll last. For the plumbing, it uh, started with a single sink, so I had to convert to double. So I did a T. And then also um, put on tees for the hot and cold water supply and ran long flex uh, hose to the other sink. Um, this paint, Advanced Waterborne, uh, it's oil-based, but it, it washes off like uh, water-based, was recommended to me as being really strong for cabinets. So this is the final product. I think it came out pretty good. It got a few final touches, like the putting the door backs on, like I talked at the beginning of the video, and the uh, legs, but looked great.